So the infamous equation that is continually used over and over in enzyme kinetics is the michaelis menten equation. And this is that equation. And what this equation does is it builds a relationship between the rate at which the enzyme operates on a certain substrate and the concentration of that substrate in that surrounding environment. So if we plot the following equation, on the xy axis, we get the following red curve. And notice an important point about the red curve. The red curve initially increases very rapidly, so essentially linearly, and then the slope begins to decrease over time. So the slope begins to level off and it approaches a maximum value known as the Vmax. It approaches that value asymptotically. And that's a very important mathematical term. So what do we mean by a curve approaching a number asymptotically? What that means is every single time we increase the substrate concentration, the red curve gets closer and closer and closer to that Vmax value. But what it means to approach asymptotically is it never quite reaches it. So the red curve is never going to actually reach that Vmax quantity. Now that's problematic because we want to be able to calculate what Vmax actually is. And in fact, if we can't calculate what Vmax is, then we cannot calculate what the Km value is, the Michaelis constant. So remember, the Michaelis constant basically describes the affinity of that substrate for the active side. And the Km value is the concentration of that substrate at which that enzyme operates at a velocity that is exactly half of that Vmax value. So if we know what this y coordinate is, Vmax divided by 2, then we can calculate exactly what the Km value is. We simply draw a horizontal line until it hits the curve, and then we draw a vertical line, and that gives us the x coordinate, the Km value. So if we can calculate what Vmax is, because the slope never actually touches the Vmax value, then we can calculate what Vmax divided by 2 is, and therefore we cannot calculate what Km is. So back in the day before computers, we really had no way of using this graph to actually calculate what Vmax and Km is. So back in the day, instead of using this michaelis menten equation in this form, we changed the equation into a slightly different form. And what we did was we took the reciprocal of the left side and the right side of that equation. Now remember, in mathematics, if we have an algebraic equation and we change the right side and the left side in the same exact way, that, uh, that does not actually change the information that the equation provides us with. It doesn't change the information, but what it does is it changes the way, it changes the way that that uh, information is actually displayed. So the information from this particular equation basically gives us an asymptotic curve. But if we take the reciprocal of both sides, we get a linear equation. We get a straight line. And now the same pieces of information, the Km value, the Vmax, and so forth, is given to us in the form of a straight line. And a straight line is much more useful than this asymptotic curve because a straight line can be used to actually calculate what Km is and what Vmax is. So instead of using the above michaelis menten equation that gives us an asymptotic red curve, we can take the reciprocal of the left and the right side to obtain a double reciprocal curve, also known as the line weaver burr curve. So if we take this equation, we take the reciprocal of v naught, we get 1 over v naught. We take the reciprocal of this, so the top is Vmax multiplied by this, and the bottom is simply Km plus the concentration of S. So if we reciprocate, this simply goes to the bottom, so the bottom becomes Vmax multiplied by the substrate concentration, and the top becomes Km plus the concentration of S. 
and now we essentially rearrange the equation. We distribute our denominator to this quantity and this quantity and we get the following result. And notice the concentration of the S cancels out on this second term on the right side of the equation. And this equation has the same exact form as a straight line. So this left side, 1 over v naught, is the y-axis. So here's the y-axis. The x-axis, this is the x-value of that line. So the x-coordinate is 1 divided by the concentration of s. The slope of the straight line is km divided by v max. So the slope of the red line is km divided by, b, uh, by v max. And the y-intercept is 1 divided by v max. So what this really tells us is the point where the curve intersects the y-axis is the quantity 1 divided by v max. So if we carry out our experiment, we collect the data points and then we plot the double reciprocal curve, if we find what this y value is, so let's say it's 20, then we know that is equal to 1 divided by v max. And if we solve for v max, we get that v max is equal to 0 0.05. So that allows us to calculate exactly what the v max quantity is, unlike in this case, where we had no way of actually determining what that v max is because the curve never actually touches that v max quantity. Now, what about the km? Well, notice that the red curve also touches, intersects the x-axis. And if we basically let the left side of the equation equal to zero, we can solve for what the x-axis is. The x-axis is equal to negative of 1 divided by km. And so if we find exactly what the x value is, again, let's suppose, I don't know, it's negative 2, then we set negative 2 equal to negative 1 over km and we find that km is equal to 0 0.5 and in this manner we can calculate exactly what the v max value is and what the km value is. In addition, if we know any two points on the curve, we can calculate what the slope is. The slope is simply km divided by v max. So this double reciprocal plot is a very useful way to basically determine exactly what these quantities is and these quant or what these quantities are and these quantities can be used to basically study the way that enzymes increase the rates of different types of chemical reactions. Now, in addition to this usefulness, there is one, uh, uh, one other important application of the double reciprocal plot. We can also actually use the double reciprocal plot to basically differentiate between the three different types of reversible inhibitors. Remember, we have competitive inhibitors, we have uncompetitive, and we have non-competitive. And we can use the double reciprocal plot, as we'll see in just a moment, to basically differentiate between which type of inhibitor is actually present in our mixture. So let's begin by discussing how a competitive inhibitor will actually affect this double reciprocal curve. So the red curve describes the curve in the absence of that competitive inhibitor and the purple curve describes that curve in the presence of that inhibitor. So notice what happens. In the presence of the inhibitor, the slope is greater, the y-intercept is the same, and the x-intercept is less negative. It's closer to that origin. The question is why? Well, let's recall how this type of competitive inhibitor actually affects the kinetics of enzymes. So remember, a competitive inhibitor binds exactly into the same location, the same active site, as the substrate does. And because it binds reversibly, we can simply increase the concentration of the substrate to basically replace and kick out that inhibitor. And so ultimately, the Vmax value is not changed. 
and if the v max isn't changed because one divided by v max is that y coordinate value it's that location where the curve intersects the y axis both of these curves will intersect the same exact coordinate value because this v max does not change and so one over v max also will not change now, what is affected by a competitive inhibitor? Well, the KM value is affected. Remember, in the presence of a competitive inhibitor, the affinity of that substrate for the active side decreases. And so we have to increase the concentration of S to basically get all those active sites occupied with that substrate. And so KM will actually increase. Now, if KM increases, then because the slope of the line is Km divided by Vmax, Vmax will not change, Km increases, and so the ratio Km divided by Vmax also increases. And that's precisely why the slope of the purple one, uh, purple line, is greater than the slope of that red line. And finally, because the Km increases, this one divided, uh, one divided by Km ratio will essentially decrease. And so this x coordinate, the x intercept, will be closer to that origin. And so that's exactly what we see in this particular case. So if we basically have some type of unknown inhibitor, we take out the hib uh, inhibitor, then we plot the red curve, and then we place that inhibitor into our solution and we plot the purple curve. If this is how the curve changes, we know that it must be a competitive inhibitor. Now, what about uncompetitive? Well, let's recall what, well, actually, let's first look at the following plot. So again, the red describes the absence and the purple describes the presence of that uncompetitive inhibitor. And notice what happens. Essentially, we take the curve and we shift it upward. And notice the slope doesn't change because these lines are parallel. What changes is the x-coordinate value where the line intersects the x-axis and the y-coordinate value, the y-intercept. Now, why does that actually take place? Well, recall what an uncompetitive inhibitor does. An uncompetitive inhibitor binds onto that side of the enzyme that is only created when the substrate actually binds onto that particular enzyme. So what that does is it decreases the total number of enzymes that are functional in the mixture, and so it brings down the Vmax value, decreases the Vmax value. Now, if the Vmax value is decreased, then the ratio 1 divided by a smaller Vmax value means we have a y-intercept that is higher up. And that's exactly why the y-intercept is higher for the purple curve than that red curve. Now, what happens to the Km? Well, the Km is also affected. The Km also decreases. And that's because when the inhibitor actually binds onto that enzyme substrate complex to create the enzyme substrate inhibitor complex, it essentially increases the affinity of that substrate for that enzyme because once the inhibitor binds onto that enzyme substrate complex, that substrate cannot actually leave the active site because its affinity is higher. And if the affinity is higher, the Km value is lower. So Km will also decrease. Now, if Km decreases, the ratio 1 divided by a smaller Km value will become more negative. It will become larger in the negative direction. And so that means the new Km value, the new 1 divided by Km, will be farther to the left along the x-axis. And that's exactly what we see happening here. Now, what about the slope? Why does the slope actually not change? Well, the slope is given to us by the ratio Km divided by Vmax. And in this particular case, both Km and Vmax decrease. And in fact, they decrease by the same exact amount. For example, if Km decreases by a half, 
This also will be halved. And so what that means is the ratio does not actually change because the proportion will remain the same. And so the slope KM divided by Vmax will not change and these two lines will be parallel with respect to one another. And so if we take the case when we have the inhibitor and then we don't have the inhibitor and we find that the two lines are parallel, they have different X and different Y intercepts, that must mean the inhibitor is in fact an uncompetitive inhibitor. And finally, let's see how a non-competitive inhibitor actually affects that line weaver burke curve. So if we look at the following uh, graph, we see that the red curve, again, the absence of that inhibitor, the purple curve, the presence of that non-competitive inhibitor, and notice that the slopes are different, the slope of the purple line is greater, we see that the y-intercept is different, this is greater, but we see that the x-coordinate is actually the same, the x-intercept is the same. And that's because as we discussed in the non-competitive inhibition case, uh, that inhibitor, non-competitive inhibitor, binds onto the enzyme regardless of whether or not the substrate is actually bound onto that enzyme. So the inhibitor can bind onto the individual enzyme or onto the enzyme substrate mixture. And what that basically means is the Vmax will be smaller. And so if the Vmax is smaller, the Y coordinate, the Y intercept will be greater as we see in this particular case. Now, even though a non-competitive inhibitor binds onto the enzyme and changes the shape of the active site of the enzyme, that substrate